Hello, my name is Terry. This video will cover our 2015 investigation in November of Pythian Castle. The first batch of clips are from the room to the south of the dungeon room. This room is normally roped off and it has not been investigated. So this was the first night that we had truly conducted an extensive investigation of what was going on inside this room. The first thing to occur was an unexplained sound inside the room. Everyone was upstairs when this was documented and all the equipment was left running automatically. There's no one outside in the, any of the other cellar rooms and none of the motion sensors were triggered when apparently some object has been moved. Throughout the night, I was continually replacing the batteries for the lasers. In this particular room, I had to replace all the batteries three times during the night, and we didn't spend the entire night in this room, just half the night. After a certain point, I gave up and move on to another room. These batteries can typically be expected to last about three hours in duration. They were failing after approximately one hour's use. Some of them lasted a little longer, some a little less, but about an hour was all that we were getting out of these batteries. One laser is new to me, it was Greg's. It was a high power 3000 milliwatt laser using exotic batteries. This one I'm not as familiar with, so I don't know what the normal duration on battery life is, but they were even shorter than the batteries in my 300 milliwatt lasers. In the following clip, the only thing that can be seen is the chemical glow necklace I'd placed around some of the equipment. All of the lasers had failed, but we hadn't yet realized this because I hadn't gone down to check on it. I hadn't expected any of these lasers to fail so soon. If you listen carefully, you can hear something being dragged across the floor. There was no one in the cellar when this occurred. After having replaced the batteries in the high power 3000 milliwatt laser three times, I decided to discard its use and switch to the 300 milliwatt green and red lasers that I had. Their batteries appear to be holding up better for some reason. In this clip, I want you to notice that the green laser emits a powerful single bright pulse of light. This is not in its design. The brightness level is continuous. When you first activate it, it's at its brightest level, and it will maintain that level for as long as possible until the battery power is no longer able to supply enough power and the light level begins to decay. There's no adjustment to increase the brightness level on this laser. So a pulse of light like this I have never seen in any of these lasers before. Fifteen minutes after the pulse of light was emitted from the green laser, something unusual happened again. This time, in two stair steps, the brightness level of the green laser stepped up in brightness to rival that of the blue laser that has 3000 milliwatts. This is only a 300 milliwatt laser. It shouldn't be able to produce light levels this bright. The batteries won't support that level of output and there is no gain control on the brightness. It's a fixed level of brightness. I can't explain how it can step up in brightness to rival a laser that's many times more powerful. The unit also appears not to have been damaged in this process, and that I can't account for either. The 
Prince Philip was captured in the foyer of the Pythian Castle. This is an area where we've had great success in capturing EVP voices. If you listen to the voices in the clip, the first thing you'll hear are two women who are standing behind me discussing that they're going to take off for the night. The next three voices are unexplained. All three of these voices are in rapid succession. The first is a male voice saying the word help. Almost immediately, another male voice says, what is it? There's no follow-up commentary on this conversation. It immediately ends. Then as I'm continually walking toward the main entry hall, I encounter the voice of a little girl and the little girl is singing. You can hear her singing, la 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 la. This is not anything that any of us heard this night. I can't account for this unexplained little girl's voice, but it's not the first time that we have captured the voices of children inside Pythian Castle. There are no children in Pythian Castle on this night. The following EVP clip occurred in the main hallway in the cellar. It appears to be a male voice asking for a cigarette. I'm not certain if this is a prisoner asking one of his guards for a cigarette or if one of the soldiers is soliciting for a cigarette from one of the other people. This is one of those unknown EVPs. The next scene was captured in the Japanese prisoner cell. A group on the tour had entered the room and they were running a device with a ghost app on it. Normally I don't put much weight into any of these software devices. This one I'm not certain how it operates, if it's pulling from a memory of words or the mechanism that it's using. But I was interested in that it did happen to put together a group of words that was actually relevant to the situation. The device spoke the words prison, trapped, in, and here. These are all relevant terms to the situation of the past. If this was just a wild stroke of luck, or if there might be something to this app, I'm not certain. I need to study it more in the future. We know you were in prison. Trapped in. The final two clips were recorded in the tunnel area in the cellar. There's an access tunnel, 240 feet in length, running to a former boiler room. This building is currently occupied by the military, but it's currently no longer in use. I've heard stories that the military does not like to use this building because it is haunted. In the first clip, approximately eight of us had proceeded down to the very end of the tunnel. On our return back, something very interesting happened. While I was walking with the camera in my hand, I heard the sound of someone exhaling. 
It was very loud and distinct, and I immediately piped up to the others and asked them if they were responsible for it. The people who were around me all said they also heard it, but that they weren't responsible for the sound. Are you feeling it? Did someone just go? I heard it. Did you? Did you do that? No. Did someone just go? I heard it. Did you hear? I heard it. Yeah, I heard it too, Terry. Yep. You, you've got company down here. You're in. Whoop. You're in that spot. Yep. Something it was exhaling. Yep. I've got the camera running, so I've got it on yep. the audio. I heard it too. I did too, and it was behind me. Well, it's behind us right now. The second clip is actually a voice recorder that I added video to later. I'd gone down to Pythian Castle a day in advance of the investigation and placed a voice recorder about seven and a half feet up on a wall in a recessed area where it would be out of the way. I left it in voice activation mode and left it for the night. In the first part of the clip, you can hear Mike and I leaving the area and then I shout down to the end of the tunnel that we're leaving. And then there is a situation where it appears that something picked up and examined the voice recorder and then sat it back down. That's what you'll hear in the second part of the clip. This unexplained sound recorded was captured sometime between 5 and 8 o'clock. There were no sounds of people approaching in the tunnel which would clearly have triggered the voice activation mode. No one approached until 8 to 9 o'clock, which is well documented by the voice recorder. During the night's investigation I caught two photographs that are interesting, but I don't consider them paranormal evidence because they're shooting into glass or mirrors. And any time you do that, you have to discard it because it plays tricks of light with shadows and with reflections. So they're merely photos of interest instead of actual evidence. If 
someone serving on the military base adjacent to Pythian Castle sees this, would you please contact me if you have a first-hand account of the activity being experienced in the former boiler room that is now a storage facility. I'd like to know more about what's going on inside the base and if it's limited strictly to that one building and what people are encountering. I'd like to further our study of this area. Thank you very much.